Hi everyone, welcome. This video starts our series on the Direct 3-3 Invasion. And I'm pretty excited about the next couple of videos because this is really a gift from AI. Before AI, this Direct 3-3 Invasion did not exist. You never saw any professional player before the age of AI play the 3-3 Invasion against the start point as the fifth move of a game. But now it's everywhere, from amateurs, even Q players, dumb players, professional players, and of course AI. Everybody's playing this move. And that's really, really amazing. That's unimaginable before the age of AI. Let's just take a moment to appreciate this fact. It's quite amazing. This is the equivalent of the industrial revolution, of the internet, you know, the equivalent of that in Go because it completely changes the way we play this game. Because this move is so different from the approach, right? In the past, we only had this approach against the start point. Maybe this in, in certain situations, but it's never this direct 3-3 invasion when the board is empty, right? So this, of course, existed. You can come in and live as black in this situation, but it's situational, which I'll get to in just a bit. But this is a good opportunity for us to reflect on um, the relationship between AI and Go and us as humans uh, in this game. So as it turns out, we got a lot of things right. right? If you think about what AI has taught us, um, a lot of those things we already knew. For instance, we knew that the star point, right, occupying the corner, and the 3-4 point, that's the correct way to open. right? So we got that right, at least. Another thing I think it's pretty amazing, right, is that Komi, it should be around 6.5 and 7.5. It's about 7 points, right? And that is not at all obvious that in this game with 361 intersections, you're trying to occupy territory that the side that goes first, which is black, has a 7 point advantage, more or less, right? Or if you give white a 7 point Komi, then it's about 50-50. That's very hard to find out, but we knew that before the age of AI. The Japanese rule, to my knowledge, has always been 6.5. And the Chinese rule, when I started more than 20 years ago, it was 5.5. And then because it's based on counting stones, so it added one stone for white, and that's two points. So now the Chinese rule is 7.5 points Komi, right? So we got that right. And we got most of the stuff right, most of the basic moves right. right? We have the approach. And to, for the three, four points, these approaches, these corner closers, these are all good moves recognized by AI. But this direct 3-3 invasion is something that human players had completely missed. Just It never occurred to any professional human player before the age of AI in the recent era that this could be a good move. And that is quite amazing. So when did this first emerge? We're talking about this as an AI move. Just a tiny bit of history. It did not emerge when AlphaGo played against Lee Sedo, Right, That's the first big series where AlphaGo took down a world champion. That didn't happen. In fact, it didn't really happen until AlphaGo Master. Right, So AlphaGo versus Lee Sedo. That was spring of 2016. And AlphaGo Master, that's December 2016 and January 2017. So AlphaGo Master basically played online against 60 professional players. Not 60 players, but 60 games. Because multiple games were played against <laughs> the same players. And it emerged toward the end of that. What we call a direct 3-3 invasion. It's not at the fifth move. Not the fifth move. But it was during a game where one quadrant of the board is relatively empty and AI came in, right? There's nothing close to the start point and the AI came in. So that was probably the start. And the reason why that didn't happen is because AlphaGo at first, right? The version that played Lisa Do, AlphaGo Master, it took input from human players. So it studied games from high level amateur players and professional players. And because human players never played this move as the direct 3-3 invasion, AI didn't pick it up, right? AI didn't invent it right away. 
So that's why we didn't see it at first. But when AlphaGo 0 was introduced, AlphaGo 0 means that the program had zero inputs from human. It only knew the rules, so it played thousands of games, millions of games against itself. Then it figured out that actually the best move in this situation is the direct 3-3 invasion at the fifth move, very early on in the game. So that's where we got it. Not the initial versions, because the earlier versions copied a lot of human moves, and this was not one of them. But when we had AlphaGo 0, that was when this move took off. And we now play a variety of variations, Joseki's, based off of this move. So in this video, I hope to give you a brief overview of our traditional understanding, pre-AI understanding of the 3-3 invasion, which is relatively straightforward. If I were making this channel, making this video before the age of AI, this direct 3-3 invasion would be pretty brief. It would be just this introduction, maybe another short video, and that's about it. But now this is going to be multiple videos spending at least a couple of hours explaining all the variations. So the traditional understanding is that this Joseki, no matter how it turns out, does not favor black. Because as I've already mentioned here on my channel in some of the Joseki videos, when we have a situation where one side occupies the corner and the other side occupies a wall on the outside, usually, it favors the side occupying the wall because you won't want to get outside. And the territory here is relatively limited. It's only about 10 points, right? After all this exchange. So this was the traditional Joseki, right? A lot of amateur players still play this online. It's not the best Joseki anymore. So you need to keep that in mind. So we used to have this, and this clearly favors white because white has a very strong wall on the outside. And black only has about 10 points. Maybe not even that after some endgame moves by white on the outside. So this is not okay for black, right? So when is it okay? Right? When is it okay? It used to be situational. It is okay when, let's say, can't come up with a complicated situation, but this could be one of the situations. Let's say if you have something like this, white has a lot of influence on the upper side, left side here. But white has not played the corner closer. So the corner is still relatively empty. But of course, in this situation, the approach will not work. White will not allow you to come inside the corner, right? There are so many ways that white can prevent black from coming into the corner. So in this type of situation, this is where black should take the corner. And this will be actually not bad, right? Black just took territory from white. And white's territory just got smaller. So this used to be a move solely aimed at reducing territory. So that was our understanding, right? So this was a situation, and this was about it. Another situation in the past is this. This is double honey and number 10 by white. This surprisingly still exists and is recognized by, by AI as a viable variation for both sides, right? So white wants to save the corner, Right, you play the double honey, and black will have this panuki on the outside. Um, it's actually really big, really strong shape for black, and white takes the corner. And there are all kinds of moves that black still has on the corner that can kind of make use of these two, now three, dead stones. So we'll go into detail about this joseki because it still exists today, but this is just to give you an idea. And this was about it. These were the only two Joseki keys that were regularly played or taught before the age of AI about the 3-3 invasion. So if white is happy about taking the outside, we play something like this. If white still wants to preserve the corner, then white should play double high and number 10, sacrificing this one stone and capture the corner in this way. But our current understanding has completely changed. And that's what I'm going to do in the next few videos. The goal is to explain the current understanding of the direct 3-3 invasion. Spoiler alert, it's very, very different. But the principles that we keep talking about 
here on my channel does not change, right? It's about putting pressure on each other. It's about giving territory. It's about looking for opportunities to attack. And this is where AI is better than human beings at calculating. Right? Just a little bit of spoiler alert. Right? We used to play this Joseki, and it's actually considered bad for white. If black does not play this exchange at 13 and 15. Right, so black should just leave it open, and when AI played this 3-3 invasion against human players at first, these are really smart, really strong professional players, what ended up happening is that this seemingly strong wall on the outside ended up being attacked by black, and quite easily too, which is surprising, right? Sometimes black even crawl one, one more time here, and after stone here, if you ignore it, then black and actually put a lot of pressure on this whole white group. And it's no longer a wall. It's just a group without a base. And that's quite scary. And we didn't really have the imagination for this type of move by black. Right? So that's where this understanding changed. And that's why number eight right here, it used to be a given. We used to think, of course, this has to be the move after number seven, the crawl move. But AI is saying, this extension also exists, and this small knight move also exists. So these two moves will lead to more complications. And in fact, this move is disfavored by AI, unless you're playing the double honey. So this move has to be followed by the double honey in order to not lose points in the eyes of AI. So lastly, how should you approach the Joseph keys? starting with a direct 3-3 invasion. I think my advice is more or less consistent. If you're a beginner, just learn the most basic variations that you can handle. And hopefully you'll get through the beginner stage soon. And once you're a double digit Q player, single digit Q player, just remember the basic variations. So I'll get to some of the complications in each video. Those are too difficult. Skip it, come back when you need it. You don't need to remember everything at once. It's almost impossible to remember all these variations, all these josekis I'm introducing if you're not using it in games. So when you want to use it in games, when you see it in games, when your opponents play these variations against you and you need to know what's going on, then you can come back to these videos and look up other resources and really learn these josekis and use them. So just focus on the basics. And if you're a dumb player, lower dumb player, looking to get into the higher down level, then you should pay attention to a lot of the details I'll be talking about because this is what a lot of dumb players, high level amateur players are playing these days. And you just have to be prepared for all kinds of variations. So that is it for an introduction. And please stay tuned for more videos on the direct 3-3 invasion. Thank you for watching.